said, I'm going to bring some from Citizens Foundation of Iceland. And we're the people that were responsible for a website called Better Reykjavik, which I'm going to show you later on. Now, our main mission of the Citizens Foundation, if I can find out how to do this. this one? Yes, yeah. this one. Uh, we're a non-profit foundation and we're focusing on improving democracy. We do that by building and promoting open source electronic democracy software. But one really important thing to us is we want to make better debate. We want to help people to increase the quality of the debate. And obviously we want to connect the citizens with their political representatives. Now your priorities is our software platform. It's open source and it's obviously e-democracy. And it's also a cloud service, uh, that it means that it's like, uh, well, like a lot of other services, you can register for that on the web and use, make up your own e-democracy easily. And we also have free example website for every country in the world, and we also have a paid service for groups, cities and countries. And from this screenshot you can see that the countries that are aligned in blue are the countries where our free your priorities websites have been used. In some cases, just like a few people, but in some cases, thousands of people. And your priorities has three main functions. It's the way to find the best ideas to better each community. And it's a way to find the best argument for and against those ideas, and therefore make the debate better, and to allow large groups to speak with one voice and organize with ideas. It works in such a way that users can submit ideas they can support or oppose ideas and arguments, or points if you prefer, and add arguments for and against the ideas and discuss them. This is really basically all that the user can do. Obviously, lots of peripheral stuff, but it's the core. And the results are such that the best ideas get chosen by the participants, and they also become better informed in that process. And what this gives us is a list of well-debated top priorities with the best points for and against them. So our debate system is unique actually, although it's really easily copyable, which we'd be happy to if see people copy that. It makes, because we put the points for and against in different columns, it makes arguing impossible. I can't put that on a slide, I have to say really hard, but it's impossible to argue. We haven't seen a single argument in our debate system. And it invites rational debate. I'll be showing you a screenshot, just the next slide if I recall correctly. And what happens is that all best points for and against an idea are visible just easily and anybody can review any issue in like a couple of minutes or five or something like that. And obviously all data and activity is easily viewable and therefore we have as good a transparency as we think is possible. So now here's a screenshot from Better Iceland, let's just zoom into that easily. And you can see from here that uh, this is the idea and a bit of explanation. Here are the best points for it and the best points against it. And the reason I say that it's the best points is that people can, you just have to mouse over it, people can say that this, I, this argument was useful or not useful. They don't have to agree with it. It's just a matter of was it a good argument or not. And you see people putting in an uh, idea and then they put in more argument for it and one against it. Because, I mean, sometimes we don't know what, what we really think, and, and even if we do, then we may know of good arguments against it. It's impossible to argue across this line. I've tried. I'm really good at arguing on the internet, and I've tried, and it's impossible. <laughs> the, the order changes, and it just doesn't work that way. It's not like the yes, no, yes, no, you're an idiot argument typical of the internet. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, the thing is open source, you can download and install it for free, preferably have some Ruby on Rails experience, so I'm sure have a good library on. <laughs> and, but you can also just register it at www.yrpri.org, and there you can easily register, and it's free for up to 50 users, and then it goes up to 200 a month for up to 5,000 users, and unfortunately not many people are going to need more than that, given the current state of participation in electronic democracy in the world. But that's negotiable. We actually have a price for that, but for, <laughs> for about what it is, because nobody's going to use it. Uh, I'm just going to go through a few successful Your Priorities websites. There are more examples, but my time is very limited, which is why I'm speaking a bit fast. Sorry about that. Uh, this is a project which uh, Henry is going to tell us more about later on, so I'm not going to even waste time, your time on it. Uh, I'm sure many of you know, know about this. For me, the most one of the most interesting parts is that 
they, they took our system and changed it quite much, so it looks totally different from our stuff, which is obviously one of the beauties of open source. You make it into what you want it to be. Now we have a website called Better Iceland, where citizens can submit law proposals and questions to the Icelandic government. And we have also the Icelandic Pirate Party has committed to uh, take the ideas from Better Iceland and put them into Parliament. We are currently in negotiation with other parties in Iceland and hoping that more than the Pirate Party will take part in this, but we'll see. And you can see that this is the main focus of Better Iceland now, what's the most important idea that Parliament should process. And then we have Better Reykjavik, which is our flagship in terms of e-democracy. Uh, we started in 2008 as a non-partisan thing. We sent an email to all the political parties that were uh, running for office and offered them their own part of Better Reykjavik. And the only party that really took off on this was the best party, and they won the elections. I'm not saying it was because of Better Reykjavik, but I'm pretty confident that it helped them in, in, uh, in getting as good of an election as they had. Just a mention. The best party is titled Best Party. Yeah, it's sorry, yeah, it's a name, it's a name, sorry. It started out as a joke party, but then they realized, at the, about the same time as the Better Reykjavik came out, they realized they were in a bit of trouble because they had peaked on the polls and the votes were going down, and they had realized that they didn't have any uh, things to say to people, we are for this and we are for that. So they just told the people, go to Better Reykjavik and tell us what you want and we'll do it. But then they also decided at the same time said we're going to break all our promises. So, so as you can see, over forty percent of voters participated actively. Eight percent added content, and around a thousand priorities were created. And we're talking about a couple of weeks period of time here, less than that actually. So it took a year for bureaucratic red tape to be gone through until we could open it in collaboration with the city. And uh, now it's that, so it's that any, every month the top ideas are processed for administration. Some are accepted, some are denied, and some get lost somewhere in the system also. This is another subject. And what it does, it connects the citizens to the representatives and gives the voter a direct influence. This is what Better Reykjavik looks like today. We also did a project in connection with Better Reykjavik, which was particip participatory budgeting in Reykjavik, called uh, Better Neighborhoods where we had a, a, a small budget, 300 million sounds big, but the Icelandic krona is not that strong. And uh, the citizens put the ideas of budgeting into better Reykjavik, <laughs> and the administration figured out how much it would cost to uh, do them, and then they were voted on a separate online voting system. And this is actually quite interesting, because this is also an exercise in educating the public. Because here you have a list of, list of the project, here you have the prices, and once you click one project, it goes up here, but that means you can't do, choose any of those because you've gone over budget. So we're trying to teach people that budgeting is not about getting everything you want, not for anybody. So this is what happens here is you've chosen your full budget and you can't do anything more. You can, of course, unchoose it and choose something else if that's what you want to. So the benefits for the city government for better Reykjavik. This is actually unchanging. This is not better neighborhoods anymore. This is just better Reykjavik in general. They get the pulse on what the people want. This is really important. They hadn't really realized that transport, public transport, is the single most important thing for the citizens of Reykjavik. There are other issues, but transport gets like a huge amount of the ideas. And to get good ideas from the public, and strangely enough, there are also lots of ideas on how to save money, and that could actually be asked for specifically and get much more ideas on that. And it's a good tool for asking the opinions of the voters. Uh, the city of Reykjavik is not doing that that much, but we're trying to convince them to do more of that. And it's also a better relation with the public because they feel that they are being listened to. Now, in a completely different way, we have a new project called the Balkan Heat Democracy Starter Project. And uh, John Jontnar, the mayor of Reykjavik, is the protector of that project. And I'm just going to let him tell you if you can find it. Yes. Let him tell you what it's about. My name is Jonknar, and I'm the mayor of Reykjavik and the protector of the Balkan e-democracy startup project. Uh, since 2010, we've been uh, running a website called uh, Better Reykjavik. And uh, over uh, 70,000 people have participated on this website. And as the inhabitants of 
Reykjavík are only 120,000, that's a clear uh, world record in e-democracy. And people of all ages can participate in Better Reykjavík. Meet Colburn Sara. Colburn Sara had an idea. Her idea to take more field trips was supported by her community through Better Radio. Yeah, the the non-profit Citizens Foundation, which is a, our partner in, in, in Better Reykjavík, is producing uh, a Balkan uh, uh, e-democracy startup project. This will replicate the success of Better Reykjavík in 12 projects in seven Balkan countries. Albania, Macedonia, Kosovo, Montenegro, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Croatia. We want to increase youth participation in democracy. Uh, this is a project that has the potential to change the perception of democracy in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Our project aims to inform the North Mitrovica citizens about the benefits of e-democracy and its core value. We need your support. Even small amounts will help improve democracy in the Balkans. And, and preserving democracy is a constant battle between good and evil. does not belong in democracy, I must say you're wrong, for one thing, <laughs> and for another, we're trying to get people to share this video and to make it go sort of, not hopefully viral, but to make it like go on the internet, because this project is being funded with crowdfunding. We're trying to get both crowdfunding for individual, but also from like larger organizations, because we're like the practical kind of guys, and uh, well, we're, we're happy to take part in EU project, but we're not filling out the forms. <laughs> So, and like Jon said, there are 12 projects in seven different Balkan countries. You saw some of the people participating in there, and this is for us now a really exciting thing. We want, really want to get this up and running as soon as possible. And the main thing with this is that we're transferring knowledge from Iceland and other countries to the Balkans. That's one thing. But another reason for combining those projects into a big project is that we want to transfer the knowledge between the Balkan countries themselves. Because each country has its own individual problems with uh, implementing a better democracy. But those countries have a lot more in common than they have in, 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 in difference, if you see what I mean. Uh, we already did that. And just a quick round through of our achievements. We've had over 436,000 unique visitors. Uh, like Jon said, 70,000 people in Iceland, that's 58% that have visited the Better Radio website. And we have this collaboration with the city of Reykjavik and the Icelandic Pirate Party is going to work with us with the parliament. And the lessons learned, uh, there are obviously lots more lessons, but those are the basic ones. That people are willing and really want to have and use electronic democracy, but they will not continue unless something is being done with what they're doing. That's for sure. Politicians, some of them are willing to use the people's input, especially close to elections. <coughs> And when you have lots of participation, you have more willingness from the, part from the politicians. It's a bit of a cut 20, 22 situation, but not quite. It's, circ it's possible to go around it. And if you don't have very active marketing or viral social media, lots of sharing, we will not get any kind of mass participation in e-democracy. Because people no, no longer look upon it as their duty to take part in democracy, they have to have some kind of incentive, it has to be fun, it has to be in their faces, because we're competing with Facebook, television, and all those things. And democracy just get better if we wanted to participate and to increase, we have to face this fact. And we must definitely have collaboration between the politicians, between the citizens, between the people creating the e-democracy e e stuff, because otherwise it's not going to live. 
And the main obstacle, the solution, I told you about this competition for people's time. We're trying to make this interesting and fun. And we have to create incentives for people to share it. And bureaucratic red tape is something that we've experienced quite a bit, both in Reykjavik and elsewhere. And that's, there are no easy solutions to that. And finally, sorry about that. Uh, the thing is that with many fragmented voices we can achieve little, but if we can be united on specific ideas and be persistent about it, then we can change at least our little world. Hopefully eventually the bigger world, but we have to focus on our surroundings first. And in order to do that, we need to find the most important ideas for every community and mobilize the population to support them. And finding the best arguments for and against priorities can really help people that don't log in, they just come as visitors to make up their mind about issues. Thank you.